Big news, people. Normal meet and greets are returning. All of the Disney resorts have officially reopened. hoop de doo musical review is coming back and more. Find a comfy spot, buckle up, because all the latest Disney World news is starting right now. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and it was a big week for Disney World news this week. We've got restaurants returning, fan favorite snacks coming back, new merchandise collections, and even more sneak peeks of what's to come. So let's talk Disney news. Okay, traditional meet and greets are returning. Disney announced this week the traditional face-to-face -face character meet and greets. Sands social distancing will be returning to Disney World and Disneyland and Disney Cruise Line and Alani very soon. The traditional meet and greets will come back in phases throughout spring and early summer, so not all locations will be available immediately, but the phased return of traditional meet and greets at some spots will start as soon as April 18th. Here's what you need to know about the meet and greets themselves. Guests will be able to go up to the characters and give them hugs, and characters will be able to sign autographs. Basically, it's going to largely be a return to normal in terms of what many guests were used to prior to the pandemic. In their announcement, Disney shared that guests will soon be able to hug Mickey Mouse, get an autograph from Mulan, and share a laugh with Goofy. But AJ, what about character dining? Well, Disney's been a bit more vague about that, but has hinted at the return of traditional character dining experiences as well. In their announcement, Disney noted, during the past two years, we've taken a very gradual, intentional approach to health and safety protocols, recent trends, and guidance have provided opportunities for us to bring back some of our most beloved magic like character greetings and dining experiences. So let us know in the comments which character you're looking forward to hugging first. And we've got an inside look at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. We feel like we've already seen quite a bit of the new Guardians ride coming to Epcot this summer, but this week Disney gave us another sneak peek. Disney released a look inside part of the queue line for the ride, and it looks pretty cool. It's called the Galaxarium, and it's an observatory of the entire galaxy where you can see things like Earth and the planet Xandar and everything in between. And then Disney Parks put up a second video on TikTok showcasing the women Imagineers behind Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. In this video, the different Imagineers talk about working together and supporting each other in a male-dominated workforce. While talking about this, we get to see some different glimpses at the new ride. We can't wait for this ride to open up so we can see it for ourselves. Still no opening date yet though, but be sure to follow us on social media at Disney Food Blog so you know when we know. Dates have been announced for the 2022 Epcot Food and Wine Festival. The festival will start this year on July 14th and run all the way until November 19th. That's 129 days of fun and great food. This year, Disney says there will be more than 25 food booths available at the festival. There will also be a delayed opening of some of those booths like there was last year. So not all of the booths will open on July 14th. Some are going to open up at a later date. The Eat to the Beat concert series will also be back in 2022. The series will feature internationally recognized artists and and local bands and will once again be on the America Gardens Theater stage. It sounds like this will be a mixture of popular artists and local bands just like what we've seen for the 2022 Flower and Garden Festival's Garden Rocks concert series. If you're all about the Epcot Festival scavenger hunts, you'll be thrilled to know that Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Seek, the food and wine scavenger hunt, will be returning. And Emile's Fromage Montage is also returning this year. As part of this challenge, you'll need to purchase any five cheese dishes from select food booths at the festival. These will be listed in the festival passport. And when you purchase a qualifying dish, be sure to grab a stamp. Once guests get all five stamps, they can traditionally get a free completer prize. Last year, it was a strawberry cheesecake soft serve in a collectible cup. And if you want even more info about this year's Food and Wine Festival, head to our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com to see the list of all the confirmed booths. We also, as you know, have a best-selling ebook about the Food and Wine Festival. It's updated every single year, so please pre-order your copy today over at DFBStore.com. If you pre-order right now, you'll get last year's copy so you can start planning, and then you'll get next year's copy as soon as it's ready to go. Now another Marvel character has come to Avengers Campus. Since its opening, Avengers Campus at Disney California Adventure has really brought its A-game, get it, when it comes to immersive characters. Disney posted a teaser TikTok announcing the arrival of Moon Knight at Disney California Adventure. In the video, Moon Knight stands in the shadows facing away from the camera, then turns around to dramatic music, eyes glowing. Chaos has arrived, according to the caption, and Moon Knight has already been sighted on Avengers Campus. Moon Knight's arrival at DCA coincides with the recent release of the first episode of the namesake limited series, Moon Knight, which of course stars Poe, Oscar Isaac, we all know, and it's on Disney+. Plus. 
Hyperspace Mountain is coming back to Disneyland. I'm so excited. May the 4th, otherwise known as Star Wars Day, is not too far away. Soon you'll be able to celebrate all things Star Wars for a limited time in one iconic Disneyland spot. According to the Disneyland website, Space Mountain will be closed on April 28th and it will reopen just one day later on April 29th as Hyperspace Mountain. Never heard of Hyperspace Mountain? Basically, it's a Star Wars overlay at Space Mountain in Disneyland that transforms this already beloved attraction into an epic Star Star Wars adventure. Throughout your adventure on Hyperspace Mountain, you might see Rebel X-Wing Starfighters, Imperial TIE Fighters, Blaster Fire, and much more. So this marks the first time this overlay has come back to Disneyland since 2019. Again, this version of the attraction will only be around for a limited time. Right now, the calendar only lets us see through May 9th, and it does show operating hours for Hyperspace Mountain at least through that time. As the calendar allows guests to view more dates, we may see more dates on which this will be available. So if you want to ride Hyperspace Mountain, start getting your park passes for Disneyland May the 4th through May the 9th. Okay, All Star Sports Resort has officially reopened this week. We went to check it out, of course. Why is this moment so huge? Well, it's because for the very first time in over two years, we can officially say that every hotel in Disney World is open. Like the other all-star resorts, the theming here is the typical larger-than-life theming you're used to seeing at Disney's value resorts. You'll find giant Coca-Cola cans, footballs and football helmets, tennis rackets, basketballs, and more. The front desk had balloons to celebrate the resort's reopening, and there were signs welcoming guests back to the hotel. We are very happy that all the hotels are back open and operational, because it's been real hard to get a hotel these days, and this is a big milestone. Now, another hotel has been added to early theme park entry. The Drury Plaza Hotel Orlando Lake Buena Vista was just added to Disney's official list of resorts included in that early theme park entry, which is a special perk for select hotel guests that allows you to enter the Disney parks before they officially open. Currently, the list of hotels included in early theme park entry features all official Disney World resorts, plus a few good neighbor hotels. The newest hotel added to early theme park entry, the Drury Plaza Hotel Orlando Lake Buena Vista, is set to open in the fall of 2022. Currently, guests can reserve a room at the Drury Plaza Hotel for a trip starting on October 27th and beyond. The new hotel will also offer many of the same perks as a regular Disney World hotel like free park transportation. This resort is located in the Disney Springs area, making it a great option for guests looking for a hotel near the parks but not quite as expensive. Okay, in restaurant and snack news, hoop de doo musical review. Reopening date has been announced, so get ready for some food and fun. hoop de doo is coming back. This fan favorite dinner show that's been going on forever will be reopening at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground this summer. Reservations are going to open up on Disney World's website starting May 26th, and showtime start June 23rd. Disney has shared that the Pioneer Hall players will be welcoming back guests to Pioneer Hall. Once again, fans will get to enjoy all kinds of singing and fun performances as part of the experience. There are going to be some updates to the script and scenery, and we'll be sure to keep an eye out for any updates on that. And we can't forget about the food, a feast full of fried chicken, barbecue ribs, some side items, like my favorite mashed potatoes and that awesome cornbread, and of course, Strawberry Shortcake is going to be available because that's part of the show, y'all. Okay, we got a first look at food at Connections Eatery. This week, Disney shared a first look at some of the new dishes that fans will be able to munch on once Connections Eatery opens up this spring in Epcot. The restaurant will be quick service and will draw inspiration from the many cuisines you can find all around the world. Connections Eatery and Cafe menu starts off with some burgers and chicken options, including a French bistro burger, hand-breaded chicken sandwich, and Southwestern burger. The prices range from $11.99 to $12.99, pretty standard. Feeling pizza instead? Then there's some of that too, including a meatball pizza and pepperoni pizza. Prices are between $10.49 and $10.99. If you want a salad, there are two options there. There's also a curry spice pizza on the menu, which is plant-based. There are also a few sides, including a Mediterranean side salad. The salads are $10.29 to $11.49, while the plant-based pizza is $10.99, and the sides range from $1.99 to $4.49. Kids have the option of a cheeseburger, chicken bao, chicken nuggets, and a pizza. These are priced between $7.49 and $7.99. And the menu lists the liege waffle for dessert, $5.29, along with two shakes, both priced at $7.29. You can also opt for a number of beverages to go with your meal, including the watermelon mint agua fresca, hot tea, beer, wine, or a specialty cocktail. The cucumber and Thai basil cooler specialty cocktail is priced at $14. If you got an allergy, you can also glance through the allergy-friendly menus for this spot. There are a variety listed online for different allergy types. Keep in mind that this spot is set to open this spring, though no exact date has been 
been shared yet. And we've got some Whispering Canyon Cafe updates. If you don't know, this restaurant traditionally has some hilarious servers who will liven up your dining experience with some jokes and jabs and just all around over the top interaction. Most of this was dialed back, though, when the restaurant reopened after Disney World's closures. The servers were still being fun and sassy, but we didn't see the full scale antics that Whispering Canyon is known for. But when we visited recently, more of the fun has returned. When we asked for some ketchup at breakfast, we got a ton of bottles from other people eating in the restaurant, as per usual. And the server also threw down a bunch of straws on our table when we only asked for one. When one guest near us was on their phone and the server brought their drinks to the table, the server yelled for everyone to be quiet in the restaurant because they were on the phone. Then another server yelled to order them a pizza before they hung up and another said to put it on the speaker so everyone could say hello. The servers just generally love to give everyone a hard time at Whispering Canyon in a very fun way. So we're super happy that almost all of that fun is back at Whispering Canyon Cafe. We still didn't see any of the famous as pony rides around the restaurant. Yep, like the toy stick ponies. But here's to hoping they'll come back again too. If you like to be entertained while eating your meal or just want a more unique dining experience, go on over to Wilderness Lodge to check this out. We've got new food options at Pinocchio Village House. Magic Kingdom is not exactly known for its dining scene, but could the new eats we found inside this park convince us otherwise? Well, we found these new items at Pinocchio Village House in Fantasyland. This spot has some pretty basic lunch options like pizza flatbreads, breadsticks, and salads, but now there are two Two new options available. First is the roasted corn flatbread for $11.99. This is described as a flatbread with roasted corn and peppers drizzled with cilantro mayonnaise. It also has some queso fresco on it and melted mozzarella cheese for $11.99. And we thought this flatbread was really good. The cilantro mayo was very herbaceous and added some good flavor and that creaminess. The mozzarella cheese was perfectly melted and the queso fresco was a cool fresh addition to balance out the heavier sauce and cheese. The roasted corn added a little bit of smokiness, but mostly you just got a burst of sweetness from each piece. We think most guests will really enjoy this, especially if they're a fan of elote or street corn, because it's basically that snack, but with a bread base. For dessert, we tried out the new Trace Leches cake for $6.19. This features toasted coconut and coconut cake. It's basically a yellow cake with lots of Trace Leches sauce on the bottom, topped with whipped cream, toasted coconut, and a white chocolate It's a Small World decal that says adios. This cake was another hit with us. There's a strong vanilla flavor from it, and the sauce tasted like vanilla and sweetened condensed milk. Surprisingly, it wasn't too sweet since there wasn't any extra frosting or sugar on it. The whipped cream is plain, and the toasted coconut added some great tropical flavor. Now, the cake's so and the sauce on the bottom, so it's super moist. Having tried some more authentic Tres Leches cakes in our time, we need to note this wasn't the perfect example of a true Tres Leches cake. We couldn't really taste the other types of milk, and the sauce is only at the bottom, not soaked in. It's also a little bit pricey for a small cake at $6.19. In general, both the cake and flatbread impressed us. We're glad that these options are available in Magic Kingdom, and we can see ourselves coming back for seconds. Okay, so we've got some updates to Epcot's Flowering Garden Festival. As always, Epcot festivals sometimes throw in a curveball kind of mid-festival, and they've done it again this year. One booth is now serving breakfast. So La Isla Fresca over between Morocco and France is now selling breakfast in the mornings. They've got two different arepas on the menu, as well as a new coffee. Both versions of the Tropical Breeze drink are also available for breakfast. Breakfast here is only served until 10.30 a.m. each day, so keep that in mind if you're interested in a morning snack. First, we've got the Dulce de Leche Cocoa Coffee, which is coffee with cocoa and Dulce de Leche, obviously. Obviously, with a cinnamon stick on top for, for $5. This drink was super warm and comforting. It almost tasted more like a spiced chocolate milk with a heavy cinnamon flavor. There is some coffee flavor in there, though. We also ordered the chorizo egg and cheese arepas for $6.25. As the name implies, this breakfast snack was an arepa with chorizo, egg, and two kinds of cheese. Our arepas were made with both mozzarella and queso fresco, which made the snack extra warm and cheesy. Definitely a good protein-filled snack to start your Epcot day. This one is stacked up in layers so the cheese was able to soak up that chorizo oil and the spicy tomato and pepper sauce and it made it a really nice savory bite. So we really enjoyed our little meal at uh, Isla Fresca for breakfast. We had no complaints. Keep in mind that this is a pretty dense and a little spicy breakfast item but if you like arepas and cheese you will probably enjoy this snack. And it's a big day, people. Just when all hope was lost, Disney surprised us with the return of a beloved treat. Back in 2021, the citrus swirl over at Sunshine Tree Terrace was unexpectedly taken off the menu with no official return date. Was it gone forever? Would it be back? We didn't know. They do this all the time to us with the Ohana 
Ramen Noodles and the Citrus Swirl. Both of these have had very, very sordid pasts where they've been on the menu, off the menu. It's like watching The Bachelor with these two. Now we're happy to report that the Citrus Swirl is back on the mobile order menu at the Sunshine Tree Terrace. If you're unfamiliar with the flavor of a Citrus Swirl, we highly recommend giving it a try. It's frozen orange juice basically twists with vanilla soft serve, which sounds pretty basic, but that frozen orange juice is really, really tart and very strong. It's a very strong flavor. I kind of want to say rich, but it's not really rich. It's just brash. It's kind of in your face, and I love it, especially kind of mixed with that really creamy vanilla soft serve. So it's back on the menu for $4.99, and the Citrus Roll is not currently posted on the in-person menu, so it's not on the menu that you see when you walk up, but you can mobile order it, and you can order it if you just walk up if you see it on the mobile order menu. Okay, we took a trip back a few thousand years over to Dino Land USA and Disney's Animal Kingdom to try the cold brew coffee ice cream float from Dino Bite Snacks for $5.99. Now this treat is made with Joffrey's cold brew coffee and haagen vanilla ice cream, which sounds like the best partnership in the world if you ask us. You can also choose to substitute regular cold brew for the shaken Jamaican cold brew, which has notes of caramel and vanilla. Our ice cream melted pretty quickly, but we really didn't mind as it mellowed out the coffee flavor and acted as kind of our milk in our coffee. We could definitely taste the vanilla from the ice cream and it made for a smooth and not too sweet treat. You can add an additional syrup flavor for 50 cents, but our cast member recommended going without since the ice cream is sweet enough on its own. If you love sweet and creamy coffee, you should definitely give this a shot. But if you like your coffee black and not sweet or just don't like coffee, then this is not for you. We also tried the shaken Jamaican cold brew with caramel syrup and we added the caramel syrup to our drink for 50 cents. Glad we did. This cold brew coffee was super sweet and we didn't find the need to add any cream or sugar. The caramel flavor was definitely there, but it didn't overpower the coffee at all. Now we've got a new plant-based sub at Pizza Rizzo. Yes, Pizza Rizzo, the counter service joint owned by that crass and lovable Muppet Rat Rizzo and the place where in the past we've recommended you order anything but the pizza. Following our own advice, we tried the new spicy Italian quote sauce sausage unquote sub, which is priced at $10.49 and comes with your choice of side. We went with a side salad with vegan ranch dressing. The sandwich is made with plant-based sausage and it's dressed with the oven roasted sweet peppers, onions, and mushrooms with marinara sauce. Our sandwich included a drizzle of Italian salad dressing that had a strong oregano flavor when we tried it on its own, but was well balanced with the flavorful marinara sauce and other items on the sandwich. We would actually recommend this sandwich to anyone looking for a plant-based or meatless quick service option at Hollywood Studios as well as anyone who finds themselves at Pizza Rizzo who doesn't want mediocre pizza. And as an added bonus, Pizza Rizzo is often easy to get into at the park, even on crowded days. So would we recommend this over other quick service lunches in this park? Like the Ronto wraps or plant-based Zuki wraps at Ronto Roasters? Probably not, but it's a good option if you're looking for more variety in vegan eats. Okay, let's talk merchandise news. New 50th anniversary collections are coming to Disney World. Yep, Disney shared a preview of more new merchandise collections coming for that 50th anniversary. The new iridescent shimmer collection features beautiful blue and gold hues reminiscent of the turrets on Cinderella Castle. In true Disney fashion, the collection uses iridescent material that catches the light in a very, very striking way. Now, Disney teased that the collection will include a new pair of mini ears, a lounge fly backpack, and more. Later this spring, that beautiful blue spirit jersey will join the collection as well. We've already seen hints of the new Disney Vault balloon collection in the parks, but it looks like this one is about to get a lot bigger. According to Disney, this colorful print is the same Mickey Mouse balloon design that was featured on the shopping bags in Disney World in 1971, which is awesome. Look out for a bucket hat, spirit jersey, and lounge fly backpack in merchandise locations throughout the parks and resorts. Next up, more items are being added to Disney's Celebration Collection, which debuted back when the 50th anniversary began. This clothing and accessories collection will add a new dress by the dress shop, Dooney and Burke handbags, and youth apparel to the lineup. Not only that, but three new goofy Donald and Daisy plushes are going to soon feature the characters in their special celebration outfits. Later this spring, a charming little Disney Vault Orange Bird collection will hit the parks. Disney explained that the new merchandise will pay tribute to Orange Bird with items like a new denim jacket and a flower power dress by Dress Shop. Based on these photos, it looks like the collection will have lots of new Orange Bird themed clothing specifically. Now, we've seen some very fancy souvenirs in our time, but the newest collection in Disney World has got to be one of the biggest drops of luxury Disney merchandise yet. Disney worked with Coach on this one. It's a brand new 50th anniversary merchandise collection, and 
there are over a dozen new items to choose from. But are you ready to hear the most exciting news? You don't even have to go to the Disney parks to get your hands on these. Many of them are available online now. We spotted the collection in all four Disney World parks at Legends of Hollywood and Hollywood Studios, Discovery Trading in Animal Kingdom, Uptown Jewelers in Magic Kingdom, and Creations in Epcot. There is quite a bit included in this one. There's a backpack, a camera bag, a crossbody bag, a duffel bag, and wallets. They even have some Mickey Mouse slides, multiple sweatshirts, keychains, and more. But what we are really excited for, of course, is the four pairs of Mickey ears. Each of the four ears represents a different Disney park. One for Walt Disney World, one for Disneyland, one for Shanghai Disney, and one for Disneyland Paris. Each set of Mickey ears is leather with various decals and patches on the ears. The logo for the park they represent is embossed on the back of one of the ears, and the park's opening ear is embroidered on the side of the headband. Each set of ears is $2.95, and you gotta collect them all, right? Sure. For all the items in this collection, along with their prices, head to our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com for everything. Now, so far we've seen the Mickey Pretzel ears, a Mickey Pretzel Spirit jersey, and now we've got the Mickey Pretzel Loungefly backpack, of course. We spotted this new backpack at the Creation Shop in Epcot. It is $85. These backpacks are a pale yellow with those Mickey Pretzels covering the bag and salt flakes sprinkled in between them. And of course, they have the huge Mickey Pretzel pocket front and center. Just like the other items in the collection, this bag is scented to smell like a pretzel. The theming of the bag even extends to the inside as the pattern of the fabric on the inside lining looks like salt sprinkles complete with Mickey-shaped salt. And check out these brand new little mermaid ears. We found them at the Aporium in Magic Kingdom. They've got pearly white shells as the ears, decorated with more strings of pearls and a layered bow with Princess Ariel's signature colors, with another pearl on top, of course. These ears are made by Bobble Bar, so they cost a little bit more than the usual pairs that Disney makes. This one's $49.99. And that's everything for this week. If you want more news, head to the link in the description box to sign up for our free newsletter. That way you can get all the latest Disney Parks info sent straight to your inbox. And that is awesome. Be sure to follow us on social media at Disney Food Blog for more as well. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.